the thing about prison, and I understood this the minute, or not the minute, but it took a while, uh, about a week for me to understand what prisons actually are. They are designed to completely isolate the prisoners, right? To kind of cut them out of the world. Um, and what that does to you on a psychological level is, one, it proves that the world keeps spinning whether you exist or not. It's like you wake up in this weird movie where you just, where you can or you can't exist and it doesn't even matter. The story of Dante Orpelia. This week on Upvoted by Reddit. Welcome to Upvoted. I'm Alexis Ohanian, and 10 years ago, Steve Huffman and I started Reddit.com. We were fresh out of college, and we just wanted to build the best platform we could for communities to connect and share online. Now, I couldn't have imagined how much this would grow, and in the last decade, it has become one of the most trafficked sites on the internet. And every day, across thousands of communities on the network, some story bubbles up because a bunch of people click upvote. And some person, some idea, gets the attention of millions of people all across the world. But that's not the end of the story. Usually when something's been upvoted to one of the thousands of Reddit front pages, it's just the beginning. And we'd like to use this podcast in order to dig a little deeper and hopefully realize that we're all more connected than we thought, one upvote at a time. And uh, now, let's pay some bills. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. They are the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. Start with a free trial at squarespace.com with no credit card required. When you're ready to purchase a plan, get 10% off with the offer code UPVOTED at checkout. That's squarespace.com, offer code U-P-V-O-T-E-D. This episode is also brought to you by Tech Hungry. It's an organization that targets rural areas of countries in Central America, Africa, and Asia, where kids are not exposed to technology. They supply schools with microscopes, anatomy models, computers, physics kits, solar kits, and more, things that we take for granted here in the developed world. They're an entirely volunteer-run organization and need your help. Go to techhungry.org and find out where you can volunteer. Maybe help their social media campaigns, contribute items for donation, or even donate some money to help them make the world suck less. Now, I'll never forget this story. It started on our IEMA, a community of people who, if you don't know, organize these Ask Me Anything interviews. They're totally crowdsourced, they're in real time, and they allow anyone, whether they're the President of the United States or just a person, to be interviewed by anyone about anything. It was on June 21st, 2010, that a user by the name of Young Luck submitted a post to our IEMA that simply said, I am a fella getting sentenced to federal prison in less than 48 hours. I'm facing 10 years. AMA. But that's not where this story begins. No, it starts with the young frontman of a band called the Bottom Dwellers. The song you're listening to right now is called Old New Orleans from their album Cracks of the Concrete. song old new orleans we recorded that on christmas day we were all alone we didn't you know we were just alone in the studio and we recorded that the bottom dwellers was actually born from this idea that um at the time music or or, or actual musicians weren't getting a lot of respect so i started this band with these incredible musicians and they were all kind of older they weren't like a young band but they they had they all had battle wounds and they'd all been around in the business for a while and it started to gain traction not only was Dante able to build a band with incredible players, but he was also able to have guest features from legendary musicians. One of them was Busy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony. 
So Busy Bone came and he actually rapped uh, for a tribute to Easy E, which was a huge father figure for Busy Bone. I don't know if you know the whole Bone Thug story, but so to come in and do a tribute song with us for Easy E um, was pretty big. Yet, not everything was going according to plan. Dante was facing a series of incredible hardships, which led him looking for an escape. I had had a son, Orion, um, and his mother decided to take him and just disappear. And it, it, it it's one of the, like, I wouldn't wish that pain on my worst enemy. I was, I was spending my father's day that year putting up missing child posters for him. Um, in and around our neighborhood, I was, you know, I was, I was, I was, it was like a this soul-sucking siege of, of not knowing um, anything about the only thing at the time that I cared about. I mean, one of the things that I turned to to help alleviate that pain was work. And in that quest to continuously work, I started turning to drugs. The first being cocaine. Um, you know, it would keep me up for three days just in the studio working. And when that started to wear off, I turned on to turn to a harder drug, meth which would have me up for a week straight working. Um, But a friend of mine um, helped me kick that, clean me up. And when I say saved my life, that's what I'm referring to because I see that act as having saved my life. Unfortunately, this friend was on his last legs and Dante took it upon himself to help him out. Well, this particular friend got into a bind where they needed drugs. I did what I thought was 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 helping this person by, you know, reaching out to contacts that I knew were in that world. You know, I went out to buy some drugs. I got arrested. Um, I got caught. I got set up by a friend who I had actually known for 10 years to the point where I was buying gifts for his kids at Christmas, stuff like that. So, um, and he had got busted and decided to become a confidential informant, started throwing a bunch of people under the bus. And I happened to be one of the people that got thrown under the bus. Which is ironic because I wasn't really a drug dealer, right? So at this point, Dante is facing a 10-year prison sentence, and the arduous trial process is looming over him. He's at home on house arrest, and this is when he first discovers Reddit. So I, after after I gotten out of the prison, I was in, on house arrest for a period of about six, seven months. And during that period on house arrest, I was just at home with my computer. And I had gotten into a heated exchange on Facebook. And I go out to look for some source. And I get led to this Reddit thread. And it completely disproves what I'm trying to say, right? So the facts just are, are shitting all over me. You know, like none, nothing that I'm saying in this argument is right. But that was my first contact with Reddit, and it was this place that was just rich with conversation. And I, I don't remember a day of my house arrest that did not consist of me logging into Reddit just to, to see what it was about. I mean, it was, it was cool. And an interesting thing actually happened while I was browsing Reddit. I stumbled across um, this place called Favors. People were just doing favors for people. It's like it caught me at this point in my life where I would completely lost faith in everything. Right. I lost my son. I'd gotten set up by what I thought was my friend. I, you know, my music career was just getting dumped down the toilet. Nothing. There was no uh, uh, ray of sunshine at that time of my life. And then here I am in this obscure corner of the Internet. And I find this place where its sole purpose is to do favors for people. It was this intense like moment of holy shit. I needed this thing right now, right here. And I found it. Um, you know, I was just there and I was like, okay, well, what can I do for people? And at the time, the only thing that I could do was kind of, you know, scribble on my computer. And so I put out a thread, uh, who wants something drawn? I'll draw it for you. And then people started flooding in with requests for these most odd things like platypuses dancing on cheese, with Kool-Aid. I mean, it was crazy. I was like, all right, this is cool. This is fun. Little sparring sessions. So yeah, so that's when I met Klein Blue. He was a mod. Of that. I think he created it. I'm not sure if he created it or if he, he was just he created a mod. it. So I created a subreddit called Favors, which was about have a penny, need a penny, leave a penny, take a penny. Redditors doing small favors for other redditors. And Dante posted up in there offering to draw things for people. And that was kind of a nice thing. So he did that for a little bit. And then at one point he said he needed help with his speech before the judge. And I write and I'm good at editing. So I edited a speech for the judge. And that's how I first came to know Dante. 
So I was out there reaching for help in a form that I had found that provides help. And I didn't think that I had anything to lose by asking for help at that time. It wasn't so much a courageous thing. It was just like, oh, I don't really have anything else to lose. Um, and I think within an hour or two hours, you know, Klein Blue had totally fixed my, 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 my jumbled mess of what I was going to say to this judge. And he fixed it. And it was great. And me and him from that point, I mean, you know, he's like family to me now. Yeah. The way I looked at it was this isn't going to take me that much time. I'm pretty good at it. And it's not like I can hurt. It's a human thing to do. So I did. I think that most people assume people are generally bad. And I think that most people simply haven't had their humanity tested. I think generally people are fundamentally good. And given the choice between doing a nice thing or doing nothing, most people will do a nice thing unless it really costs them a lot. And it really didn't cost me a lot to do stuff for Dante. I think if I hadn't done it, someone else would have. Really, altruism is what makes the world go around, and I think that if people only did stuff for publicity, this would be a horrible Kim Kardashian universe we live in, and I just don't think it is. I don't really look at things like that anymore. You know, I'm like, what ifs? And this, I don't kind of change the way that I perceive the world, and, and this whole experience has perceived that. It's not really what would have happened if he didn't come along, is that he did come along. Uh, I'm still a big romantic in that in that in that sense, and where I believe that little pieces are placed in your path for specific reasons, or there was a reason why he was up at 4 a.m. when I put out the call for help and stuff like that. So I don't think past what would have happened if he didn't come along and help. I'm just extremely grateful that he did. But then around that time, I also stumbled on uh, the original thread that Dan wrote. It was like this. Just this call out there, like, who wants to do a secret Santa? Another, just this, this obscure act of humanity, right? It, is obscure, it was this obscure act of humanity in this, the most digital, static, random place, right? On the internet. And I needed to see that so bad. And I got so enthusiastic about what people were doing in that place. Because I was just finding one instance after another of people buying hungry people pizza or, you know, somebody needed a favor a couple of states away and people were, you know, very excited to help these other people. And so it became something that I latched onto as kind of a lifeline, right? A lifeline and not to sound corny, but it was kind of a lifeline to hope that the world isn't as fucked up as it was, right? And I needed that because I was going through breakdowns. I was, you know. I was going through breakdowns at the time. So anyways, I, I became heavily involved with wanting to do that too because it was this first time that I was actually happy in a long time, right? Uh, was to see these people out there just helping each other. Like Dan didn't know the thousands of people that responded and, you know, he didn't know those people. And, and it, was just, it was just a great thing. It was a really, really good thing. Meanwhile, Dante still had a 10-year sentence and an extremely conservative judge looking over his shoulder. So in, in 84, I think the sentencing committee, they came up with these guidelines to give judges like, okay, you do this crime, you are eligible for this amount of time. Or if you are a judge um, serving a case that involves this kind of crime, this is the little area that you should be working with. Well, in 86, during the height of the drug war, uh, the, the Anti-Drug Act passed. And what that did to the sentencing guidelines was, first of all, it completely you know blew the numbers up for drugs that were prevalent in the African-American community, like crack. So the sentencing disparity between crack and cocaine was like 17 or 18 to 1. And then in 2007, I believe, um, Booker versus United States, the Supreme Court ruled that those were actually unconstitutional. Um, and it gave judges leeway to deviate from those guidelines. The thing about this particular judge that I had at first, what made him a prick, was that he was still adhering to the laws before 2007. And he was throwing the book, like the absolute book were being thrown at people. If you got caught with X of Y, you're doing the maximum sentence that I can give you because those were laid out in the guidelines. Yeah, Right before I was coming up on sentencing, this judge that was going to throw the book at me, no, no matter what, he was going to throw the book at me. He falls and he breaks his hip. I mean, I can't even make this shit up. He falls down the stairs or he fell at a Walmart or something and he broke his hip. So I needed to get a replacement judge. And the judge that I got, Whaley, was this, you know, this liberal judge. He was a Clinton appointee. He, you know, saw cases on a case-by-case -case basis. He gave you a chance to speak. 
He really looked into the story of what was happening rather than just saying, these are the guidelines. This is the time that you're going to get. So that in and of itself was like, you know, this mind blowing thing that I came within days of receiving the maximum sentence, 10 years for my crime and ended up getting a new judge who actually listened to my story. And in that case, the, the, you know, my speeches, they really did play a huge role. So there was a lot of, you know, vomiting and stuff leading up into that sentencing. I mean, here's this guy, he wakes up in the morning, he has his bacon and eggs, and then he's going to go into a courtroom and decide the next couple of years of another man's life. That's a lot of power for a judge to have. And so, um, I mean, it's just scary. Ultimately, Dante received a three-year sentence, seven years less than the 10-year sentence he would have likely faced under his previous judge. I would still be in there now if that guy didn't slip and fall and break his hip. I would still be in prison right now. So, you know, so it was a super blessing that came along when it needed to come along. Luckily, Dante was able to keep many of his relationships on Reddit alive. Klein Blue, as well as others, helped him with his blog, Black Market Arts. It was well, the idea came about before prison, but I had no I had no idea how to actually put something like that together. One, because the logistics of actually getting mail and pictures out of prison is, you know, is so chaotic. And two, because the technology side of it, I just didn't know. Um, and I was running out of time. So it started as a place where I could kind of just vent to the, my family members. Um, I didn't think that it was going to gain the following that it eventually did. Generally, it was, hey, here's this thing that shows up in the mail, and then I scan it, and then I update the blog, and then I posted it on Reddit. And after a while, it was, hey, they've given me this truly janky-ass government email thing, which is its own discussion. Coralinks is an amazing Kafka-esque email program. Um, so we'd talk over email, and he'd send me things. A couple times we talked over the phone. Um, I ended up sending him letters basically going, okay, well, here's what's going on. Here's what's in my life. So he became a pen pal in a very real way, but we sure made a run at it. By and large, I tried to remind him that the world was out here and he basically tried to remind me, Hey, you're not in prison. Things are pretty good. So, you know, that's, it, it, it was a, um, Mutually beneficial arrangement, I think. The thing about prison, and I understood this the minute, or not the minute, but it took a while, about a week for me to understand what prisons actually are. They are designed to completely isolate the prisoners, right? To kind of cut them out of the world. Um, and what that does to you on a psychological level is, one, it proves that the world keeps spinning whether you exist or not. And so for, for someone young uh, to go in and to have this realization that, you know, you could drop off the face of the planet and nobody cares. And that's a big part of how they're designed. It's like you wake up in this weird movie where you just, where you can or you can't exist and it doesn't even matter. And so that writing became therapy for me. I had kind of this lifeline to the outside world. Visual art also began to play a bigger role in Dante's life. Prior to going to prison, Dante's only interaction with the medium was creating material for his band or his interactions on r slash favors. Yet he really took a liking to drawing and painting while he was in prison. Well, the first time that I got in there in those first months um, when I was in uh, what's, what's essentially just a holding tank, but with, you know, 400, 500 guys in the same tank, there isn't really anything to work with. And so I remember I had bartered for this ballpoint pen, some of the exact same big ballpoint pen so that I could actually draw. I don't even remember what I traded for it, but it was something like two meals or something like that. It's something like, because I wasn't hungry. Uh, and I was, you know, doing these little sketches on envelopes um, at first on these envelopes of just what I was looking at. It'd be like the walls of the, my cell, <laughs> the little toilet next to the bed and stuff like that. Um, it kind of evolved throughout the whole period as, as kind of this therapeutic thing where I wasn't trying to draw what something looked like. I was more so trying to draw the emotion that was involved with looking at that thing. It's kind of like, because I don't have a camera, you don't have any recording devices in there. It's just trying to capture the emotion that was involved with the specific moment. From my perspective, Dante went to prison as someone with an incredibly um, robust work ethic with a lot of love for his son. 
And he came out somebody with an incredibly robust work ethic with an incredible amount of love for his son. So I didn't see any real big change in Dante as a person. I saw him really flourish as an artist. Um, I think if you compare the stuff that he did when he went in to this stuff when he came out, he sure stepped up his skills something magical. I think that one of the things that gets, gets most artists in trouble is that they lack the chops to execute their ambition. And I think Dante's always had a lot of ambition, and I think he really gained chops while in prison. So if anything, he gained the ability to realize what he had in his head through whatever medium he wanted to work through that he didn't have initially. And I think a lot of that was the limitations of the medium available. You know, he, uh, he got really good at working in coffee, of all things, because coffee was cheap and free. I got this letter from my son. Uh, I still have it. I still keep it. Um, and I was drinking coffee one day. And, you know, up to that point, it had just been all pens and pencils and stuff like that. And I'd spill coffee on it. And on this letter, I saw this kind of like it was just blotches of coffee. And I saw him in it. So I started painting with coffee and I started painting with Kool-Aid and I started painting with everything anything that I could get my hands on and started painting with because I wasn't yet at a place where I could actually, you know, get colors. I think that I grew most when I realized that there, there, there wasn't really any boundaries in that, in that sense. Right. Yeah. So I couldn't get the specific hue of blue, but did I really even need this specific hue of blue? So it gave me that freedom to just not give a fuck. Right. So it gave me the freedom to not really care that I didn't have this or that I didn't have that. Um, so I think that that, that actually ironically gave me freedom seeing that and being able to use that and experimenting with the different brands of coffee and what kind of hue of brown they had, like the Folgers lets off a different hue of brown than the Keefe does and Keefe is a little bit more yellow and it's, it's, it's cool. Like, Hey, you can't take this away from me, punk ass guards. So it should come as no shock that Dante kept staying involved with Reddit gifts, even behind bars. So I was participating in, in the Secret Santa that was birthed before I went in. Um, um, I was participating in it while I was in prison. And it was a lot of, it was a logistical nightmare for Klein Blue and he handled it all. And my gifts were coming in late because the CEOs were holding them up in the mailroom and all of this and that. But it gave me this experience that, look, I'm still the same guy that's able to participate in this thing that exists in the digital world, even though I haven't seen a computer in years. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, it's really scary that what the guys that are in there, when they get released, what they face, the world is greatly different now than it was, say, five years ago. So when I went in, the, one of the big fears was that I would get out and just be completely lost with what was happening. But then you come across guys that are doing 10, 15 years, and the last experience they had a com- with a computer was like, you know, Windows 98 and stuff like that. And so this idea of mobile computing and actually touching the computer with your fingers is completely alien to them um and i remember one of the things that i used to do while i was down was i actually used to gather guys in the law library and on paper and pencil i used to sketch out what an iphone looks like (laughs) right and i used to kind of give them a primer to what the computer is going to be when they get out um how what what an actual app is and at that point i was just getting what i was hearing from you know little magazines that were making their way in but that's all alien to somebody that hasn't seen a computer in five years right we had this brilliant idea we were going to make this uh when we got out this brilliant idea we were going to make this app right and the app was going to let people post pictures and just pictures (laughs) and then we get out and instagram's like (laughs) it was basically instagram it was prison instagram but it was done with like pencil and paper it was it was fun it's so funny um but what we did have on that little mock-up of our photo app that wasn't on in instagram we had the ability to group so right now your feed is just everybody but in ours you could group people this is my family these are my friends this is entertainment and you could group who you were following based on so they still haven't figured that out <laughs> as free individuals with access to technology in the open internet we are absolutely blessed with opportunity I'm a big proponent of STEM education development and trying to afford as many people as possible the opportunities that I've been so lucky to just get. Tech Hungry understands the immense value of this education and wants to bring it to kids in rural areas of countries that would never normally have access to any of it. 
They supply schools with microscopes, anatomy models, computers, physics kits, solar kits, and more. And Tech Hungary has always found ways to deal directly with these schools and bypass any corruption to make sure that any donations or supplies go directly to the kids that need them. They're driven to give as many of these kids an opportunity for a better future as possible. Though, they are an entirely volunteer-run organization and need your help. They need volunteers to write articles, to engage communities on social media, and to help them with language translations. They need people to donate new, used, or even refurbished technology. And lastly, they need donations. So please, go to techhungry.org and help them make the world a better place. At this point, Dante was finally released from prison and joined a halfway house. You get out and everything is beautiful. You know what I mean? Like freedom is beautiful and you start noticing all of these things that you never noticed before. Just these little mundane, meaningless things that are just so beautiful. Like like if you look at a legal pad, on the side of the legal pad, there are these two little orange red lines that run down the side of it, right? And I remember getting out and saying, that's beautiful. Like somebody thought about that color. It isn't orange and it isn't red. It's right there in the middle. And that's beautiful that someone was paid to think about that. And so when I first got out, everything was beautiful, even the halfway house, even though we weren't allowed to have phones, even though we were giving, you know, still getting bologna sandwiches for the first couple of weeks. You can't leave. You have to go through these classes of why you're not an asshole anymore. And you know what I mean? Kind of primers on how to find a job, but you have to be back inside of the halfway house at six o'clock. And we weren't uh, allowed to have cell phones at the time. Um, But I remember I had this sketchbook. That I used to carry around, so I cut a hole in the sketchbook and I, I'd put my phone inside the sketchbook <laughs> because they take make you take it off for search. And it was just my sketchbook. You know, I always had it with me everywhere that I went, so they always passed over the sketchbook. And I had cut out this hole and had a cell phone in there. It was funny. Yeah. So I had the sketch of Gary Coleman inside just in case they did find it. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be this picture of Gary Coleman looking back at them like, "Hi." And th- there, you really start to understand how lucky someone is if they have. Um, people out there that are looking for them because half of the halfway house is just guys that have no idea what to do and it's really uncomfortable for them and that's understandable too so I was extremely lucky that I had people looking out for me when I got out. Dante is referring to a call he received from Dan McComas, founder of Reddit Gifts and now SVP of product at Reddit. Later I found out that Dan had bought a piece of art like I painted with Kool-Aid the little a little uh, ornament, a little Christmas ornament and Dan got it. So when I got out, he threw me a line like, do, do, you know how to, do you still know how to use a computer? So I think I started doing, I was doing contract work for them. Like he'd say, I need this and this and this for this exchange. And then I'd find a way to bust it out. And then we went on doing that dance for about a year. And then um, he sent me this text message and I'll never, I'll never fucking forget this text message. He says, I think we need to talk. Because up to that point, I had never even heard his voice. It was just this guy that I considered like one of my heroes, right? He gave me this thing at a time when I was at my lowest. He proposed this idea that was just mind shattering, that there were people around the world that wanted to make other people happy with nothing in return. And I needed to see that, bro. Um, so he was this, you know, larger than life figure to me. He was like one of the heroes that I had and we had never even spoken. And he, uh, we talked and he uh, said, do I want you to come and meet the team? Uh, I went out to Salt Lake City and I met the team and I loved all those guys and all those guys are like family now too. And uh, Reddit at the end of the day helps a lot, a lot of people. And besides working at his dream job at Reddit, Dante also created a startup intended to tackle a necessary evil, the phone calendar app. Me and one of my best friends, we, we, we had dinner one night and we both kind of pulled out our phone simultaneously and we looked at the calendar and we were like, this shit sucks. You know what I mean? And we had both spent hundreds of dollars on every single calendaring option out there. And there just wasn't anything that was designed for kind of the ADD individual um, where you kind of need to get slapped in the face with your events. Um, You can go sign up for it. It's on Dials app. It's called Dials. This was calendar basically that's around a 12 hour dial. So your events that are in your calendar just sit around the clock. Um, you can go to Dials app, D-I-A-L-S-A-P-P dot com, and you can sign up for it there. Um, I'm hoping to get it finished by January. It's just a different way to look at it. Kind of like an artist's take on a calendar is all that is. Dante also wanted to make sure you know that his story is far from over. The human inclination whenever we go through some kind of hardship is to find a reason why. 
You know what I mean? That's kind of like, you know, who we are as human beings is to figure out the reason why. It's this great question. Why am I here? What am I doing? And, you know, as I started to get approached by people to tell the story, kind of, you know, I've gotten like people that want to write books about it and all kinds of crazy shit like that. And I don't think that what I was supposed to learn from that experience or the reason why, I don't think I've reached that point yet. I've taken so much from it and what I've learned, but I don't think I'm at the point where I can put an exclamation point or a period on why yet. I would say that the judicial system kind of works by throwing shit at the wall to see what sticks and that what sticks is not necessarily what is just or what is logical. I have observed that justice is not equally applied across all demographics. And I think that the kids that are kind of bookish, that don't really know how to reach out to their friends, but spend a lot of time on the internet, tend to get screwed. And those are the people that I interact with the most. And we're now at an age of the internet where we can find these small pockets of humanity anywhere there's an internet connection and help one another out. I mean, you know, do what's in your heart. That's not hard. I had this discussion with Dante. I said, you always regret the things that you don't do more than the things that you do. And he said, dude, if I could have not hit that pipe the first time, my life would be so different. I said, okay, we'll put a meth clause on there. You regret the things that you don't do more than the things that you do, except meth. And he said, yeah, that's about right. There will always be opportunities to help other people. And it's rare, even if it goes completely wrong, that you aren't glad that you helped somebody. I think that the strength of Reddit um, isn't just the community, right? It's the diversity of that community. It's this place where no matter what kind of weird shit you're into or how different you think you are, there is a small pocket in Reddit where you fit in. And that is one of the most beautiful things about Reddit that isn't being replicated anywhere else on the internet. When that whole community gets together as a whole and puts its weight behind something that really changes the planet for good, um, it's a powerful thing. Before he decided to say goodbye, Dante wanted to introduce you to his favorite human. Ryan, come here, buddy. Say hi, Reddit. Hi, Reddit. Yeah, that's my guy. Wow. I hope you all enjoyed that as much as I did. We are very lucky to have Dante working with us here at Reddit, and I'm looking forward to many, many years of his awesomeness. In fact, you may have noticed we are uh, immortalizing our favorite AMAs now with some of Dante's unique sketching style. Perhaps it'll be the new wall street journal stipple portrait but uh you can see them over at facebook.com slash reddit they're on our facebook page right now they're going to be some other places going forward but like i said we're real lucky to have dante and expect to see many more big things coming from that very talented guy now this podcast would not be possible without the support of squarespace you know not only do they make a great product they've also been behind us 110 percent since we started so if you haven't checked out all the updates in squarespace 7 you really should they have a much simpler one-page interface. You don't need to keep switching from front end to back end. There's more integration with Google Apps and a new partnership with Getty Images that'll give you access to a wide variety of great stock photographs for your website. And all of it is still just $8 a month. Congrats to the Squarespace team. Very cool stuff happening over there. And if you'd like a free trial, just go over squarespace.com. You don't need a credit card. And uh, when you like what you see, use the offer code UPVOTED to get 10% off. You'll be getting a great deal and you'll be supporting this podcast. Remember, that's squarespace.com, offer code U-P-V-O-T-E-D. Send us your Squarespace sites. Why not? Tweet at us. Show us what you got, and maybe we'll even talk about them. Thanks again to Squarespace. Please support them since they support us. If you'd like to reach out to Dante, you can find him on Reddit with the username YoungLuck, and you should check out his new app at dialsapp.com. This is the start of what I hope will be a really exciting and long journey. Please let us know how we're doing. We've just spun up a Reddit community for this podcast. It's over at R Upvoted, and we'll be posting every one of the episodes there, so feel free to subscribe and chime in on the comments of each episode to let us know what you liked, what you didn't like. I'll be paying attention to the feedback and uh, looking forward to going on this journey with you. So thanks so much for tuning in for the first episode of Upvoted. May there be many more.